So in this video on champagne, we've entered into the world of biological chemistry. A lot of the processes are being driven by enzymes, biological catalysts. And you might think that biological chemistry is very complex, but really it's just organic chemistry. A lot of the chemistry that goes on in our bodies and in organisms such as yeast is simple organic reactivity. And we can understand it with our basic principles of organic chemistry. So let's start by thinking about fermentation. The key reaction in fermentation, we said, was the conversion of glucose into ethanol and carbon dioxide. So let's just draw that out. We have a conversion process, and let's remember how to draw glucose in three dimensions. We covered this in the Coca-Cola video a few weeks ago. A six-membered ring in the chair conformation with alcohol groups there and there. All these are in the equatorial positions and here in the final position we have CH2OH attached. And this would be a molecule of glucose in the chair conformation. This is converted into ethanol, two equivalents, and carbon dioxide two equivalents. The oxidation number, if you remember, is the number of heterofunctional groups attached to the carbon, the number of bonds to heteroatoms. So, for example, this carbon is bonded to an OH, so it's oxidation level 1. This carbon bonded to an OH, oxidation level 1. This carbon bonded to 1 OH, it's a 1. This carbon bonded to 1 oxygen, it's a 1. This carbon bonded to one oxygen, oxidation number one. This carbon is bonded to two oxygen, oxygens, oxidation level two. This means this carbon is special. We may come back to this in later podcasts, the idea of a special carbon here in this position. And if we look at the products, well here we have a carbon with no bonds to heteroatoms, oxidation level zero. Here is a carbon with one bond to a heteroatom, and here is a carbon with four bonds to heteroatoms, oxidation level four. Now, I said that this process wasn't a simple one-step reaction, and I asked you to go and explore and investigate what's really going on in this chemistry. And it's a process of several steps. First of all, the glucose gets converted into pyruvate. And the structure of pyruvate is like this. This is pyruvic acid. The pyruvate anion is the ionized form of this, which is what will exist at pH 7. What you notice in this structure of pyruvate is that this carbon is oxidation level 0, this carbon is oxidation level 2, and this carbon has three bonds to heteroatoms, oxidation level 3. So some of these carbons have been oxidized from the framework of glucose. And this process requires an oxidizing agent. And we use a biological oxidizing agent called NAD+, which gets converted to NADH. Just think of it as an oxidizing agent to allow the oxidation of these carbon atoms. What then happens is the pyruvate gets converted into ethanol. And the byproduct of that is carbon dioxide. What you'll notice here is this carbon is still oxidation level zero, this carbon oxidation level two, and this carbon is now oxidation level four. Notice we do show the hydrogen attached to an aldehyde. It's a rare exception to our drawing rules. This hydrogen is attached to a carbon but we do show this hydrogen atom. To make it absolutely clear, this is an aldehyde functional group. I should point out that in this reaction scheme, glucose turns into two of these pyruvates, and these two pyruvates turn into two ethanol and two carbon dioxide. The final step is then an enzyme which converts ethanol into ethanol. And these two equivalents of ethanol go to two equivalents of ethanol. Notice this is a reduction reaction. 
We're going from oxidation number two for the aldehyde to oxidation number one for the alcohol. And so this requires a reducing agent. And again, we use the biological reducing agent, NADH, to drive that reduction of ethanol to ethanol. So we can understand the fermentation process as a sequence of oxidation and reduction reactions, which allows the glucose framework to be broken up first into pyruvates and then converted by loss of carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide is lost from here into ethanol, which is reduced to ethanol. One thing that's often said about champagne that's interesting is that it will get you drunk faster than an equivalent wine because it's fizzy. Somehow the bubbles help the alcohol into your bloodstream. Is it actually true? Well, there's only been one decent scientific study looking at carbonation on alcohol uptake. And they took vodka diluted to 18.5% alcohol with either water or fizzy water. And what they found is that in two-thirds of the subjects, fizzy water increased the rate of uptake of the alcohol. However, in a third of the subjects, the fizziness had either no effect or actually slowed the uptake of the alcohol into the bloodstream of the patients. So the study provides some evidence that carbonation might assist alcohol uptake, but it's not completely conclusive, and it certainly doesn't work in all of the subjects in the trial. And the reason for this is still a mystery. It's unclear whether or why carbonated drinks might get you drunk more rapidly than non-carbonated ones. Now we're going to think about what happens to that alcohol in the champagne once you've drunk it. Well, what happens is that ethanol is metabolised by enzymes in your body to ethanol, and that ethanol was then further metabolised to ethanoic acid. And what you should notice about these structures is that ethanol has this carbon in oxidation number one. Ethanol, with the two bonds to oxygen, is oxidation number two. And ethanoic acid, with three bonds to heteroatoms, is oxidation number three. And this process, as we go across here, is one of oxidation. It's interesting to note as well that the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme does indeed remove H2 from ethanol to give ethanol. However, the aldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme, as it's called, actually doesn't remove H2. It adds an oxygen to ethanol to give ethanoic acid. Both of these processes, either loss of hydrogen, gain in oxygen, are oxidative processes. I asked, why does this vinegar get removed in your urine? Well, this is the whole reason the body does this chemistry. It wants to get the ethanol and get it out of your body. It will come out of your body in this form because the pKa of ethanoic acid is around 4 to 5. What that means is that at pH 7, ethanoic acid actually exists as the deprotonated form, ethanoate. Because this is ionic, it's very soluble in water. And what is urine? It's water. And your kidneys help remove water-soluble salts like this from your body and place them into the urine. And that's why your body has evolved these enzymes in the first place, to help protect you against the negative effects of alcohol. Interestingly, alcoholics are often treated with the drug antabuse. And what antabuse does is it inhibits the enzyme that converts ethanol to ethanoic acid. What that means is if you have a drink, your levels of ethanol build up within your body. This gives horrible symptoms of hangover and does reactions in your liver and kidneys. And it really makes drinking a very unpleasant experience. Because very rapidly after taking your ethanol, you get this buildup of ethanol, which your body cannot convert to ethanoic acid properly because of the inhibition effect here. And that's why antabuse is an effective treatment for alcoholism.